and welcome back to Teacher Gimbal's channel. Today we'll be going over illustrative math, geometry, unit one, lesson 10 practice. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe and the button that I think is right over here. Let's get started. Problem one, here are four triangles that have been transformed by different transformations. Which transformation is not a rigid transformation? Well, in order to do this question, first we have to ask ourselves, what is a rigid transformation? And there's two different ways we can actually think about this. One, we can think about it by the definition. A definition of a rigid transformation is when you take a shape, you move it somewhere else, and the angle to the shape stay the same measure, and the side of the shape stay the same measure. That is the definition of a rigid transformation. Rigid transformation only comes in three different flavors. One is rotations, one is translations, and one is reflections. So we can say, hey, is this a translation, rotation, or reflection? Or we can say, hey, are the angles and the sides of the transformed shape exactly the same as the original shape, or the pre-image is what we call it here. And either is the correct way of finding if it's a rigid transformation. Now, in this question, I see that we aren't necessarily given measures of lines and angles. So we're just gonna kind of estimate to see what happened here. So in this case, triangle ABC moved over to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. That looks like it just was slid over or was translated. So we're gonna assume that is a rigid transformation. This guy looks like triangle ABC. He kinda, he moved on over and then rotated onto triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, because that C goes there, that B goes there. He looks pretty rigid. This one looks like we've got a reflection. So it was flipped onto each other, so that also looks pretty rigid. And this one over here is clearly not a rigid transformation, because although the angles are the same measures, the side lengths are not the same measures. So this one is an example of not a rigid transformation, because the side lengths changed. It's also not a translation, rotation, or a reflection. It's something else, which we'll learn about in later lessons. Let's go on to question two. What is the definition of congruence? So congruence is easy to think about it as the sh say shapes are the same. But we're ge geometricians, mathematicians, geometers right now. So we need to be even more specific than that with our language. So let's look at all of these answers and figure out which one's the best one. A. If two figures have the same shape, they are congruent. So part of me likes this definition, but I think that's a triangle, that's a triangle, that's the same shape, and they're definitely not congruent, so that's not specific enough. If two figures have the same area, they are congruent. Um, well, this triangle and this square could theoretically have the same area, and they would not be congruent, so that's not a good enough definition either. If there is a sequence of transformations taking one figure to another, then they are congruent. We just saw a transformation that shrunk a triangle. So that's a sequence of transformations that bring one shape to another, but that doesn't guarantee that they are congruent. D, if there is a sequence of rotations, reflections, and translations, i.e. rigid transformations that take one figure to another, they are congruent. And that is a correct definition. So if we have rigid transformations, which only come in three different flavors, translations, rotations, and reflections that move one shape to another, then we're good to go and we are congruent. Let's go on to problem number three. There is a sequence of rigid transformations that takes A to A prime, B to B prime, and C to C prime. The same sequence takes D to D prime. Draw and label D to D prime. So B moves to B prime, C goes to C prime and A goes to A prime. So the whole shape is rotating over. Now, if D is right here, that means D is gonna stay basically where it would be in between B and C, but this case in between B prime and C prime, and we would label him D prime. And that would be our answer. Let's go on to the next question. Problem number four. This goes back to constructions. Three schools are located at A, B, and C. So we got a little schoolhouse. We can draw it. Maybe we can't draw it. Okay, we're struggling with drawing at the moment. Three schools are located at points A, B, and C. The school district wants to locate its new stadium at a location that will be roughly the same distance from all three schools. Where should they build the stadium? Explain your reasoning. So here, we need to go back to our, const our construction lessons and draw a triangle. 
Now, if you remember, if you have a triangle, and this works on every single triangle, and you're going to create three perpendicular bisectors. So first, I'm going to bisect this part of the triangle with a perpendicular line. Then I'm going to bisect CB with another perpendicular line. And then I'm going to bisect AC with a third perpendicular line. What this does is it creates an intersection of the three perpendicular bisectors. And this intersection is equidistance from each of the points. So if I wanted to create something that was in the equidistance between all of the schools, I would create the triangle, I'd create my perpendicular bisectors, and I would draw my stadium or create my stadium right at that point, right there. All right, if you have any issues with constructions, I would recommend going back to the previous lesson. And they talk about, I talk about this idea a lot for that lesson. Problem five, to construct a line passing through point C that is parallel to line AB, Han constructed a perpendicular bisector of AB and then drew line CD. So we had AB, he's chilling over there. Han drew a perpendicular bisector. So let's draw our little box over there. We had point D and then he drew a line like this. Is it parallel? Or the question is, is it guaranteed to be parallel? So in this image, it looks parallel, but we're not actually sure if C is here. Maybe C just looks like it's there, but it's a tiny bit above, which makes this not parallel. So in this case, we don't know anything about this angle over here. We don't know anything about what's going on on this line besides the fact that C and D are on it. But because we don't know anything about the angles, we're actually not guaranteed to be parallel. So we can't that just assume that it's parallel. Remember that if these angles over here are both 90 degree angles, it does guarantee parallel, but we don't know anything about that angle, so we can't assume that it is parallel. Problem number six. Let's make this the right size. The diagram is a straight edge encompassed construction of the line perpendicular to AB. So we have AB and we have a line perpendicular to it. So AB is over here. Our line perpendicular to it is this guy right there. It passes through point C. C is over here. Select all the statements that must be true. Is AD equal to BD? Uh, we don't know if this is a perfect bisector. AD, is that equal to BD? So no, we cannot assume it to be true. Is EC equal to AD? Uh, we don't know anything about the length of EC, so no. Is AC equal to AD? Well, we drew a perpendicular line. Now, if I'm looking at my perpendicular bisector, um, it just says the line perpendicular to AB. So AB is this long guy, but by looking at the construction, I can see that two circles were drawn where we have the center A and D. So this per perpendicular line over here, I can know also bisects AD because of how these two circles were constructed, which means I can conclude that AC is congruent to DC and that this is a perpendicular bisector of AD, but not a perpendicular bisector of AB because B is just chilling over there on its own. Is EA equal to ED? Well, EA would be this guy and ED would be this guy. And E is living on the perpendicular bisector of AD. And what we know about those points living on the perpendicular bisector is that they are equidistant to the endpoints of the bisector. So yes, they would be congruent. ED is equal to BD. Is ED equal to DB? We know nothing about where B is. He's just chilling on its own. So we can't make any assumptions with B. Is CB equal to AD? Um, again, B is just chilling on its own. We can't make any assumptions there, so that would not be correct. I believe that is the end of our lesson. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. If you like this video, please subscribe so you can see more like this, and I will see you in the next one.